Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that perhaps you dislike something. Perhaps something makes you uncomfortable. Perhaps you really, really despise something, but in that something, there is something good. In that thing that you dislike, there is a benefit. And certainly the trials and the adversity and the challenges that we face in this world could definitely be included in those things that oftentimes we dislike, but they are good for us. And we find that oftentimes the trials, they're actually bringing us closer to the things that we treasure. The test, the adversity is actually driving us and steering us in the direction of our aspirations and our goals, or better yet, the aspirations and the goals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid out for us. The tribulations that we face, they could actually be bringing us closer to the fulfillment of our dreams. And the first example that I want to bring of this reality is that of Salman al-Farsi. And the thing that he treasured was the truth. The thing that he valued was guidance, such that he would make life-changing decisions in order to come closer and to align himself with the truth, leaving behind the religion of his father and the ministry of his father and transitioning into Christianity. And when he did so, he aligned himself with the most knowledgeable people at that time. And he continued to do so as they begin to age out until they said, or they directed him to the land of the Arabs, the land of the palms, the palm trees, where they were anticipating the arrival of a prophet. And the man that Salman was, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, seeking out the truth, treasuring guidance, he did everything in his capacity to try to arrive at the land of the Arabs to find the Prophet والسلام, whenever he would come, but he didn't know where he was going. And so he paid a tribe of Arabs to take him and they betrayed him. And thus the trial began. And they, so, they sold him into slavery to a Jewish man. And through that trial, through that transaction, he landed in a place at the time that was known by the name of Yathrib. That trial brought him directly to the place that he was seeking, the city of the Prophet ﷺ. And so we see that the trial actually led him to the treasure that he was seeking. And as they say, the rest is history. He accepted Islam upon the arrival of the Prophet ﷺ to what now was known as al Madina. Another example is the Treaty of al hudaybiyah The Prophet ﷺ, he had a dream. And we know that the dreams of the prophets, this is a form of divine inspiration. They are true dreams. And in this dream, he saw himself making tawaf around the Kaaba, wearing ihram. And so he woke up and he began to make preparations and inform his companions that they were going to make umrah. And the companions who had not laid eyes upon the Kaaba for six years had not seen their own homes, had not stepped foot in Mecca for six years, you can only imagine how excited they were. And so they traveled the distance of more than a hundred hours on foot, the distance of two weeks travel, expecting and hoping that they were going to make Umrah. But the journey was not as easy as they had hoped. On that road, they had to pass through patches that were covered in thorns. They had to go through areas that were covered in sharp volcanic rocks. 
And then when they arrive to the outskirts and they begin to no negotiate their entry into the city, right, they were met with terms that were unfair, right? They were refused and met with hostility by the Quraysh. And so this was a great trial such that even some of the senior companions, they became frustrated. They became frustrated in that moment. And ultimately they would leave after having traveled that great distance, they had to settle on the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, which meant that they would go back after that long journey without making tawaf, without laying their eyes on the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they were so excited to do. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they are going back, He reveals. Indeed, we have opened up for you a great victory, a clear victory. This was not a loss. This was not a waste of time, right? But this was a clear victory in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the treaty set the stage for them to return the next year and they would make Umrah without hostility without fear of treachery. Rather, they were safe and sound. But had they made it the first year, then how can you make Umrah and make Tawaf and you're concerned about being attacked, right? And so that treaty, it paved the way for them to make Umrah and Minin safe and sound. And the breaking of that treaty is actually what led to the conquest of Mecca, the ultimate victory. And so the trial that they faced when they accepted the treaty of Hudaybiyah actually led them and paved the way for them to attain that treasure that they was actually seeking. And the last example that I will give of this reality that our trials oftentimes are leading us to the fulfillment of our dreams is that of Yusuf alayhi salam. And this is perhaps the quintessential example of this reality. They can plot and they can scheme and try to take away your dreams. But when Allah is on your side, no one can intervene. Kill Yusuf, put Yusuf in well. Steal Yusuf, put Yusuf for sale. Buy Yusuf, tempt Yusuf, put Yusuf in jail. How many lies against Yusuf can the criminals tell? They said he was dead. They said he was killed. They said he was a liar. They said he used to steal lies to Aziz, lies to Israel. But the lies can't survive when the truth is revealed. Every trial that Yusuf alayhi salam faced, it brought him closer to the fulfillment of his dreams. From him being put into the pit by his own brothers, from him being sold into slavery, for him being harassed and enticed by the wife of Aziz, from him being thrown into a prison, all of that was actually setting Yusuf up, alayhi salam, to ultimately reach the dream that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him as a child, such that Allah ta'ala, he says, كَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ That is how we establish Yusuf in the earth. He was able to go wherever he wanted. And there's no way that Yusuf salam, he would have been able to do that for himself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continues, Nusibu bi rahmatina man nasha. And normally this word, Nusibu, we afflict, right? Musiba and affliction, we cause to befall. Most of the time it's used in context of calamity. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses it in the context of mercy. Why? Because the trials were actually blessings in, in disguise. Not malice, but the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ultimately set Yusuf alayhi salam up to fulfill his dreams. And one lesson to close, inshallah, that Yusuf alayhi salam, he left behind for us so that we too may turn our trials into treasures. He gave us the formula. 
He says, إِنَّهُ مَيْ يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Right? These two things is what helps us preserve our dreams. That whosoever has the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have the sabr, they have the patience and the perseverance that when they're in the storm, they're still not diverted from the path. They still continue to go in the direction of the destination that they are trying to attain. And whoever does this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will never allow their reward to go the waste. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa shadu anna ina antu wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk jazakum Allahu khaira wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.